I want to put a, a non-public session for negotiations at the bottom in non-public, please. Okay. All right. Um, somebody moved the document, so I can't see it. Um, roll up somebody? It's the next thing on the yeah, somebody needs to put it back up to the top. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Assign a timekeeper. Do we need a timekeeper tonight? I'll keep track and try to move us along. If somebody until taking Don gets here. Then I know we're recording this, but is somebody taking minutes? Uh, I can take minutes. Okay, this thank you, Stacy. Thank so, you, Stacy. Yeah, no problem. All right, do we have any public comments? We've got a couple callers here, public uh, people on the meeting. I don't know whether they have something to say. Um, do we have any public Star, star six to unmute. There you go. Yeah, star six to unmute if you have any public um, I just, I'm, my name's Meg, I'm Megan Payne. I'm on the, the RSUD board. I just want, I'm on the phone. I just wanted you to know that I am one of those, those phone numbers. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. And in the interest of minutes, I'm going to put down the phone numbers. If anyone else who's called in would like to identify themselves by name, I would appreciate that. Um, the agenda my went screen. off screen. Megan, which one of the phone numbers is you? 8263 or 03? No, 3282. Okay, so we have two other, uh, unless there are board members that Owen. are in. If well, nobody. This is them. Owen Brad 3. I'm six. Okay, that's Owen on 63. Yeah. yeah got it. And who's 8? Oh, Thank you, Owen. Okay. Who's the other one? All right. Earlier, Rob from Orca was on the phone. Okay, maybe that's who it is. And Rose was on the phone. Right, Rose is 03. Okay, good. So I haven't heard it. Public people wanting to do public comments, so we will move on to act approve them if there aren't any minutes listed on here to approve. So reports to the board. Bruce, you're up. Yeah. Um, so I want to handle this request first because it's, I hope all of you had, I don't know how you would have had time to read all of it, but basically what it is, is a explanation uh, of the need to uh, shave um, five days off the, the calendar. There's two really two actions. One is for the board to decide whether they would forego uh, the 177 days, which is currently in our calendar, and go down to 175. I don't believe that we need a vote from the commissioner or the secretary of education to do that, because that's not doesn't take us below the minimum number of days. So I'm asking the board if you would approve um, shaving two of the days off the calendar in order to go down to 175 and then i'll talk about the next step and bruce can i jump in here because we had a meeting today where we talked about this go ahead okay so this is mary the, allen that's speaking yep mary allen and the uh the group has um decided the administrative team has decided they only want two days so this goal is for planning for um, potential fall scenarios, and it would be using teacher professional development to make that happen. Um, so, I mean, you can take a look at this and read it, you know, in detail, but we know that families are stretched at this time. We also know we've got a lot of planning to do to put together to make the fall happen the way that we want to and in using all different scenarios. And uh, we also know that teachers did a phenomenal job and they kind of started without much notice. And we think that if we could plan this ahead of time, they would be phenomenal. You know, they were um, 100%, they put 110% in. They 
uh, had a lot of resiliency and grit and being creative in what they were doing. Um, so I'm going to go over this quickly here, but you can take a look at the top part. And then if you go down to the bottom part where Ray just sent us, we align this to the teacher evaluation system. These are the things that, according to the Danielson model, that we evaluate teachers on. And so we want to prepare this so that we can start the year next year, no matter what the situation is. So the first one you notice is planning and preparation. There are some structures and systems that need to be put into place to have the rooms prepared for the new possible new learning environment that we might be facing next year, uh, according to guidelines. But we also have certain materials that we need that we don't have now that we need to um, inventory and order for the classrooms and the schools for next year. We have to um, put into structures, whether we're gonna be face-to-face -face or remote. And we do that by, for uh, the learning instructions and we do that by content core areas. We want to develop some routines that are face-to-face -face and end in the remote learning so that if we do have to transition, the students will be familiar with that transition. It'll be the same process either way. And um, if we need to go back and forth multiple times, it'll be a smooth transition for teachers and families and students. <clears throat> There's some Mary curriculum Ellen, in this. Yeah. Mary Ellen, I'm not sure you have to sell this uh, to the board. I oh, think, okay. All right. I think um, if they have questions, I'd, I'd rather that you just answer them. Sure. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe they're not. I think the, the most important thing in this request has more to do with families and kids than it does our staff. I think our staff has worked very, very hard, but I also believe that there's there's some fatigue on the parts of families and and that uh, and and the kids actually um, because they they've kind of owed through this. Um, but I, I think maybe it would be save some time if if people have questions they could ask um, Mary Ellen or Owen or anybody else that put this list together that's on the call. Bruce, this is Tara, I have a question. Go ahead. So is this work gonna be done in conjunction with the COVID-19 task force that's being developed with faculty, staff, community, board members and administrators, or are they gonna be doing dual duty between the staff doing this plus the task force doing this? And I think, uh, I, I, think I don't know the answer. I know the answer to that because it's right in this document. I didn't read word for word, but you can see it's in one of the paragraphs that this is going to be in response to the COVID-19 task force that they're going to be working in conjunction with each other. They're not going to be working um, in silos. Um, I have a question. You mentioned uh, Mary Ellen in the, the top of it that you were looking like a, around cl uh, around classrooms and you're looking, you know, you, you mentioned the phrase uh, in accordance with guidelines. Yeah. <clears throat> have there been guidelines for that? Are these guidelines we're developing ourselves or do we have uh, guidelines from the AOE or from, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the CARES Act people as to how to, you know, uh, kit out a classroom that's, that, that qualifies for, for, for CARES funding? <laughs> Which guidelines, and, please? And Carl, you always ask the good questions and you probably know the answer, but the guidelines change day to day, minute by minute, so we're being really flexible. And as we learn what the guidelines will be when we enter school, we want to be prepared for all scenarios. So thanks for asking that. But yes, that that is the that moving target that we're always faced with. <laughs> Mary Ellen, my question is: I know you've made the assertion and Owen has, as principals have, as they put this together, that getting ready now ensures better preparedness when we open school. Um, I'm, I'm a little, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, it seems like after a couple months of stopping this, and I'm not lobbying against it, I guess I just want to make sure that uh, I, I, you know, that preparing now gets us somewhere better for the fall. And, and I think that was the next part I was going to say, Bruce, about the curriculum and instruction piece. That's especially the focus, of course, that I'm most interested in. We worked really hard this year. We brought the teachers together every single week, and we prepared about three weeks in advance. Now, I think if we had more time to prepare that work, 
And if we could make it so that it would work in the classroom or remotely, we could start the, the, the ground running next year. And we could be working on tweaking them instead of creating them right before we get into the classroom. So that's one of the things I'd like to see. So some of that would include like the scope and sequence, identifying those priority proficiencies, creating uh, video lessons so that we can either use them in the classroom or remotely, and we can continue that instruction going, focused on the areas that we want it to be on. So I think that's probably the biggest part of where this planning right now is gonna help us in the fall. So you're saying that I should approach the AOE on the makeup day for Tunbridge, but I don't need to approach them on three more days. And the reason I'm asking that question is because the other districts, other SUs have requested days to go below the 175 minimum and they have been granted. So, um, and I have the template of the request by one of the SUs that was sent to me uh, actually by Bonnie. Um, so I know that that some districts are only going to do 172, others are 171. And I was prepared to have the five plus the one extra for Tunbridge in order to get them in sync with everybody else. Uh, and that was I, in my odds and ends. I mean, so you're I think saying that you don't need those five, you only need two. I mean, I think that's up to you, Bruce, if you want to request more, but we have been planning to go right to the end. So um, I, I don't know. I'm really I this, Mary Ellen, because yeah. I want to make sure that the board gives me permission to go first. I want to know whether, what they want to do. Um, Bruce? Because, you know, when you ask this, there's really no turning back. Uh, and it's important, you know, I thought the first request was the two days to go from 177 to 175. That's a board decision. That's not an AOE decision. Mm -hmm. The other one would be a three, the three snow days from there to go to 172, I guess. Um, yeah. And, and in, in, in Tunbridge's case, it would be 171 because they had the extra no heat day in the fall i would ask for that in conjunction with that and i'm just that's what i want to do i'm not going to go to the aoe and ask for this unless that's something the board will allow me to do so it's really bruce the board this is ethan on both of these things go bruce, ahead e ethan bowen here um uh, this sounds like a lot of work um for three days i mean when i first heard about it i thought oh what a nice idea be done, but um, I'm not sure it's worth the trouble at this point. And I need to hear an argument why it would be worth the trouble to chop off those three days. The only, the only response to that, Ethan, that I can give you, and I feel very strongly about this, teachers are weary, the families are weary, the kids are weary. It's not like before that you have to hold the line because you wanted to have a minimum amount of instructional days and some families want childcare, you know, uh, farther into the summer. In this case, what we've done has been a real burden on families and it's stressed teachers oh, I know. too. I know, I understand. And that's, that's, the re that's the, my reason. I don't, and okay. you know, besides what you read there, that's my reason. And, and Ethan, we, we've also, we have, um, when we brought our look, uh, together all the teachers in the grade alike teams, we ask them, what would be helpful for you going forward? What are you taking away from this to make next year better? And what do you need to help better support you? And these are the things that they said. They said they wish they had more time to plan it because they were kind of put into that situation in the yeah. last year. They really want technology training because they feel like they could have done a better job right from the beginning and they were kind of learning as they were going. And they That's really right. wanted the curriculum prepared. We had a full in-service day right before the shutdown, and that really helped start us in that direction. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that was a blessing. It wasn't enough would you, time. Would you, would you take some of these three days and just make it um, off for the teachers, or would you use it as some in-service planning time? No, yeah, there would no, be they no, no off at all. No, okay. Yeah. They're going to work these days. I have a lot easier time giving the kids off than yeah. I do giving the, they need to work for their well, And the families, and the families too. Yeah. 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 
Okay, good. No, that, that, that those are good reasons. Um, um, yeah. Thank you, because I couldn't tell otherwise. Yeah. To, to, uh, to follow up on Ethan's question, is that two days or five days? Mary Ellen, do you think that that's sufficient time to make progress on, on these? These are some big goals um, and a very fairly compressed um, time period. And I think that any progress is good progress, but I'm just wondering how far you think realistically you'll be able to get in that time frame. I know that this is, a, this is a lofty ask for those two days. I think it would give us a good start, but I also think that in the fall, when we come back, we're gonna have to refresh and, and have more planning time at that time. I think that is going to be essential to keep this going. But if we start the process, it's hard to get. It's hard to get then once we open. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Jamie's on this call. I asked him to be. Uh, you might want to ask your new superintendent his feelings about this. I certainly. Uh, we we talked earlier this morning, but I you know he's on this call, so you might want to. Somebody may want to hear from him about this. I'm Jamie, sorry, what are your thoughts? Spot. I would like to hear Jamie's thoughts. How y'all doing? Good. It's good to see what you again, Ramon. It's been talking? quite an introduction to the, the, my new bosses through this computer screen most <laughs> evening. So it's good to see y'all. So uh, the COVID task force team will meet on Thursday. They're going to, that, that work of that group will be, and I'm going to define their work is to provide recommendations to the admin team in regards to large components as we prepare to reopen. And as my email said that you all, I think most of you saw because principal shared it, was to focus on the idea of a hybrid model, in-person instruction with guidelines provided from the Vermont Department of Health Governor's Office and AOE. And I will tell you that is what we're going to follow is Vermont's guidelines. I think recommendations from the CDC can be taken into um, account, but I'm gonna look to vet things through Vermont um, because I think that at some point we have to have one place where we're, we're doing our shopping. And I'm looking for us to do our shopping from what's coming out of the agency of ed um, and the governor's office and the department of health. So that's the guidelines that we'll be using. Um, and then, um, in addition to that is we'll look in the event that we have to at times that we were having to move to virtual learning, which is what I'm hearing Mary Ellen talk about, to be able to do that seamlessly. Um, and so I think some planning time at that point at the school level will be necessary. I met with Bonnie Bourne. She's going to facilitate the COVID-19 task force today. I think we have a strong agenda. I think we've got a strong task force of stakeholders across the SU, they're gonna break out into smaller committees and with, to do their work and then report back. We're gonna look at guidelines from transportation to food service, to entering the buildings, to what does it look like to provide intervention in these settings. And then those guidelines and procedures will go back out to the buildings for them to use to inform planning. Um, you know, when you interviewed me, you said, what does it mean to have an SU and local control. And again, I'm just, I, I'm gonna keep speaking to our SU is large and therefore we have to set out guidelines and procedures, but then I would look to, to ensure equity. And then I will look to buildings then to take those guidelines and procedures and to make informed decisions based on what they know about their communities and buildings. Because what temperature checks look like in Rochester may look very different from Rudd High School. And so, yes, time in June would be helpful. And, Jamie, and that what task you force will come back together in August again to review any updates that we gather between now and then. So that being said, Jamie, I'd like to make a motion that Bruce requests the days. Can I get in here and speak for a second? This is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, hi, everybody. I bring me myself up. OK. Um, I think, I think it was Bruce, but it might have been Jamie who, who said just a bit ago that getting days in June is much easier than getting days in August and September. And um, I would agree that that's true under normalcy, but I don't know that we're going to be operating in, in normalcy. And I think that our teachers deserve, because they, I believe they have done an absolutely outstanding, incredible 
top notch. You give me more adjectives or adverb, you know, and I'll be putting them out for you because they have done incredible here. And I want to honor that. Um, so I think that work in June is important, but we may have to be very flexible in August and September and say, so I don't know what the starting day is. I should, but it, let's say it's the 25th of August. Does that mean that we don't start until after Labor Day on the 5th? And I'm not looking at a calendar, so I'm just throwing dates out. Then we be flexible then because they are going to, you know, if we can't start in a building, they're going to need time together. And if we have to start in a building with things very different than what they were when we left in March, they're going to need time and we're going to need to give it to them and we're going to need to be flexible. Um, so I have no problem giving them time. Now, one of my question uh, was, and I, I think I've sort of listened and answered it is that contractually they we're not going over their contractual time. Is that correct? That yes. is correct. Okay. We're not talking about teachers working any less. Or more. They would just be converting classroom time, if you can call it classroom time, yeah. well, you to professional development time. Yeah. Uh, no, I would never come and ask you to round off the contract. Uh, that's just not happening. So. so do you want a motion, Kathy? Uh, yes. So I make a motion. I don't know if it's going to be correct. So I'd, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I will certainly accept friendly amendments, but to um, Sarah, Sarah, there needs to be two motions. One is to approve a uh, the two days to go from 177 to 175. And then the second one is to ask me to approach the AOE to see if we can get the snow days, the three snow days and the coverage day. They, they had four um, waves. So the first one is to go, this is a board decision to go from 177 to 135. Can you stop for a second? Stacy, are you getting this down? Because that's going to be my motion. <laughs> Sarah, I have Sarah Root moves to approve the request for two days of professional development moving from 177 to 175 instructional days in the 2019-2020 academic year. Okay, so Bruce, how's that? Good, yeah. I think, is it Bruce? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the first one. That's the first one. Okay, can we move, can we move on that before we go to the second motion? Sir? It would be I second it. I think. Was that who seconded that, Ethan? Ethan. Ethan. All right. All right. So, any discussion? I move the question. All right. All those in favor? Can we do roll call? Roll call. Um, do I have to note individual votes or just the result? I think we just need everybody to vote and then, okay. All right, so Andrew. Hi. Andrew. Yes. Hi, Carl. Hi. Ethan. Hi. Lisa. Hi. Um, Stacy. Hi. Sarah. Aye. Sarah Root won. Motioned it. Sarah Root, I thought you said Sarah. I, I'm I. Okay. Did I get everybody? It's hard to see. Kathy, this is Sue. I say I also. You say I also. Thank you, Sue. Yep. Meg Teachout. All right. Come on. I'm I as well. Okay, perfect. Well, we have no nays, so the ayes have it. Yay. First, second motion. What does that have to do? The second motion would be for to authorize me to approach the Secretary of Education and ask for a waiver of the three snow days that we took that would take us down to 172 uh, days in the calendar year, instructional days, and to also incorporate in that the one day for Tunbridge that they lost because of uh, no heat uh, in the fall. So that that's what it would be. So moved. 
by Sarah. One moment, I need to type this. <laughs> Lisa Floyd, I noticed you turned up just too late to take minutes. And to run the meeting. She was <laughs> tonight. Sarah Rupert authorized Bruce to approach the Secretary of Ed asking for a waiver to excuse three snow days in the 2019-2020 uh, academic year, um, as well as the one day that Tunbridge chip for a heating issue to transfer these days to professional development days. Sounds yes. Good. I'll yes. So I'll say that. Who seconded that? Oh, Kathy. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Do we have any discussion on the motion? I'm just curious, what's the actual date that that, this is Meg, teach out, what's the actual date that that uh, ends instructional days on? The 10th. The 10th, okay. Yeah, and actually it would be, or maybe it's the 11th. Uh, um, Stockbridge has one less day because they went to, to school on town meeting day. Uh, so they're, they're, it was all in my odds and ends, Meg. Uh, I don't know whether you saw it or not, but I tried to lay it out in there so that you guys weren't blindsided by this tonight. Um, I didn't have the whole explanation. I sent that to you uh, with a Google Doc, but uh, I didn't get that until around noontime today, but I didn't see it until just before this meeting. So I did send it along, but... I tried to lay it out in the odds and ends about what days we're talking about. Um, I didn't yeah, include. Go ahead. All right. So all those in favor say aye. If there's a better way to do this than roll call, let me know. But this is the way I know how to do it. Um, Mr. Jones. Aye. 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 Carl. Carl says aye. Ethan? Aye. Aye. Lisa, are you there? I said aye. I'm sorry. That's okay. Stacy? Uh, aye. Stacy, aye. Sarah? I Sue. I Megan. I Amy, are you a, are you there? I all right. I think yes. everybody. Uh, you got Michael. Did Michael? And oh, Mike, are you? There? And, and Bob Gray. Bob Gray. Aye. Yeah, he's there. Yep. Okay. And Megan Payne. Megan, Megan and Payne. Sue. Did Sue say something as well? Said I. Okay. Megan Payne says I. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you, Megan. That's everybody. Can you put the agenda back okay. up, please? I've got another issue okay, I want to keep talk on about. Next. All right. The other one is uh, we're hearing, it's not official yet, but we think we are going to know this by the end of the week, that there's not going to be a summer program. Uh, so One Planet wouldn't, or the summer One Planet program wouldn't operate. So what I want to ask you, and the reason I'm, I'm telling you this is because we've heard some people drop drop the hint that that's going to be something that's talked about later on this week, either on the Secretary of Education's call on Thursday or the Governor's call on Friday. Um, so I wanted to tell you uh, that that may be happening. We would have to go to some kind of a, a distance type program like we're doing now for the summer. And I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, and this isn't official yet, but it will, the comment was dropped by one of the lawyers at the AOE that, that there wasn't going to be a summer program. And I don't think we can take that to, to, to the bank as though it's 
actually been stated in public yet, but uh, this is a person that's pretty high up in the administration. And I don't think wanted to preempt the secretary or the, the governor in making this announcement. So if that be the case, and- Bruce, was that Donna? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was Claire O'Shaughnessy, who's the other lawyer on the AOE. And I don't think she meant to say it, <laughs> but, but so, so, you know, I, I don't want to get her in trouble. Uh, it was, it was in a meeting. Uh, it was in, in a meeting where it was overheard. So, uh, but we'll, we'll know by the end of the week that we were told last week that the decision on this was going to happen this week. And so we'll, we'll find out. So I don't want you to think that it's all said and done yet, but I'm feeling much more, um, you know, going in that direction uh, at this point. Now, if that be the case, and I've heard you, many of you express that you would like to keep feeding kids over the summer. Uh, we've been doing a lot of checking to find out whether uh, what what whether we'd have the labor in order to be able to do that. Um, there are some people who have summer jobs other than what they're doing and may not be able to help us out, but I think I'm pretty confident, generally speaking, that we could probably man this uh, over the summertime, especially if we go to a, like it was last summer, a production kitchen type thing where we would send, prepare them in one place and and then distribute them in other places. And I don't believe that we would be able to um, use busing in order to take them out, out to homes, but it would all be curbside and it would all be, you know, in the towns, uh, you know, in the schools that are in the various towns. The question- Where would the funding come from? Well, that's where I was gonna go now, Kathy. Uh, I'm not too worried okay. about the food because you know, there's, they're pretty flexible in the, uh, you know, the food, just few food that we're getting and, and reimbursing for the food, uh, the USDA. Um, I'm worried about the labor costs. Um, and so I called, I want you guys to know what you're approving if you do that. And I certainly wouldn't advise wanting to start off the year in in a tough place because you've spent a lot of money on on distributing meals that doesn't mean i don't think it would be valuable i think it would be valuable for families and for kids over the summer for at least the six weeks that we normally do it to be able to provide those meals so tara can i ask you to join in i asked tara to come up with the worst case scenario on doing this um, of what those labor costs might be based on what they've been uh, during this time that we've been, fe been feeding kids at home, feeding kids curbside. So Tara, do you have something you can give me? 59,000. As the SU, correct? Yes, that would be if and it truly would depend on structure. That would be if you were still running the staff that were running in all eight buildings. Now, I asked Tara to give me the worst case scenario. Uh, so that's probably as bad as it can get. Could be better, depending on how we did it. Um, and you certainly don't have to make that decision tonight. Uh, but I wouldn't wait much longer uh to to figure it out i mean do you that would break down by your portion of the su um to contribute to that so bruce, i so do you have bruce, questions bruce why is this an su decision and not a district decision i mean di the the food plans are 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 by budget district based so if if rochester and stockbridge chose to to do things one way and Royalton and, 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 and Bethel chose to do, thing, do things another way, wouldn't that be, you know, a, an individual decision and not, not a, a, an SU-based decision? If you, yeah, uh, you know, technically I guess it would be, but 
I also have to consider that let's look at, at the uh, first branch situation where the cook is retiring at the end of the year. Uh, they're going to, we're going to have to use Chelsea to, to help those people in Tunbridge. If, if everything, you know, if we do a production kitchen and we prepare in one place and then distribute, that's a whole different thing. Um, so I guess it could be Carl, if that's what you intend to want to do, but I, I've approached Rochester Stockbridge is very much interested in, in feeding our children throughout the summer. And we'll certainly take that up at our regular meeting on, on, on Tuesday. And while we certainly appreciate the idea of, of budget savings, if we could, if we could do bulk purchasing and bulk, bulk preparations, um, you know, the, at, at the end of the day, I think that's, that, 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 that's an add on benefit. And I really don't want to have to hang whether or not we're feeding kids in Stockbridge, Rochester on what, might happen with a retiring uh, a, a chef in, in, in Chelsea or, or Tumbridge rather. Well, I only use that example because it may not look as seamless with people being pretty fatigued and need vacation time and maybe can't work because they have summer jobs. I just don't know the particulars. I know some of the particulars, but I, you know, I just and want to I, I would agree that, that I've this to all of you. So. And Bruce, this is Sue. So I, would, I, I agree with Carl. I think, uh, you know, our voters in general think too, the, the supervisory reunion has too much control and we don't have enough say over what goes on down there. And I think people would be a lot more supportive if it was a local decision, uh, you know, and coming up with the money locally than having it done through the supervisory union. I would just like to interject in here, if I may, please. The current programming sure. that is sponsoring our food service is through the Summer Meals Program, which is submitted through the Supervisory Union, as are all of our other claims. So before any decisions are made, we would need to go to the Child Nutrition Program and make sure that we go through the appropriate approval processes. Can so I don't know how they would feel if we have that. one district not doing it and another district doing it. So I just want to err everybody on the side of caution that we need to follow the guidelines that are set forth by the USDA when it comes to this stuff. It's not a, it's not a free for all. I'm not, um, I'm not, not going to say it's a free for all. Bruce, can I please jump in? You guys in? one at a time. Can I please yeah. jump in here and finish ahead, my thought? Um, yes, Carl. It, you know, the, 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 you know, I'm a local education authority for the children in Rochester and Stockbridge. Um, our general board feeling is we need to feed those children. We've, see, we've seen the guidance from the USDA, and more, more importantly, our taxpayers have seen the guidance from the USDA saying that summer programs are going to be continued. I understand that it may, or may be more complicated to manage the USDA requirements for Rochester Stockbridge separate from the, 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 the USDA requirements for Stratford or Chelsea Tunbridge, but that doesn't change the idea that I do not want or, or I, I do not think it's appropriate for um, the idea of the, 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 the convenience of the SU or the application proce process to get in the way of us feeding the kids the way that our district wants to feed our kids. The, the point I'm trying to make, you hire an SU to be efficient, to try to, to give you efficiencies across the board. This makes no difference to me. I'm not going to be here. So it really is... How do you want to go through this? You want to do it district by district, which um, makes it more complicated, but it it does give you more local control. So I have no so, I have no skin in the game at all, other than so Bruce, knowing that you have to jump on this thing now. Bruce, why don't we kick it back to each of the the board individual board meetings, see their feeling, and then bring it when we know everybody's feeling. Can like I haven't my whole board about it. I'm not sure how they feel, but I also know that going into spending deficit spending, if it's going to cost us more money, we're already don't have a past budget. So while I want to provide our kids as much as we possibly can, I want to provide a summer program for our kids, but that's sounds not happening. I just w want to also be fiscally responsible. I, I have a related question. Yes, if I might. And, th and that is um, when the summer program is in session, is that funded at the district level or at the SU level? 
And what is currently, ha like, is that already staffed and are the people going to have to be laid off? And if so, are we going to have to deal with unemployment insurance? Like, how is the staffing situation going to change? Um, are we going to see a cost savings? Or are we going to have to spend more because of um, because of the program potentially not happening? Yeah, in the past, Stacy, um, we've done a the One Planet has worked with Willie in um, in Bethel and and uh, Royalton, and we've done a product production kitchen and sent the meals out to the districts uh, for distribution. Uh, so it really hasn't run on a district district by district uh way in the path um i understand the whole local control thing and all of you wanting to make up your own mind on this and take care of your own kids but i'm not sure that's really the question i think um part of part of what i said to you regarding labor has to do with what we think we can get away with and still be able to see everybody. Um, and Tara, do you want to you want to chime in because I know you've got some things to say. Tara, I already spoke what I had to say. I just like to make sure that whatever we decide to do is approved by the child nutrition program because they're the ones that are going to be reimbursing us the money for those meals. And it's their rules that we have to follow. Um, can I speak? And Stacy, to answer your question, the summer meals program is administrated through the 21C program. And Bill Bonsiera is the one that mans that up. And he is the one that has been handling the April claim submission and will continue because we are on the summer food program. So we are outside of our normal child nutrition reimbursements at this point in time for breakfast, lunch, snacks, and fresh fruit and vegetables. So when we went to this setup, we had to wait for the USDA to give us the approval in order to do that and to meet all the requirements and to change all the requirements because it wasn't how the program was intended to be. So now that the USDA, USDA has done that, they have extended us the ability to do that through August 31st as a summer food program, like we're submitting it now for reimbursement. Can I also add something for Stacy? This is Deb Matthews. I'm on the um, summer uh, program committee and we had a meeting last week um, and Carrie's reached out to me um, as we're waiting for the decision from the Agency of Education. She still is going to offer distance tutoring to students um, whose families want it over the summer. So her staff will be doing some of that. Um, she also, we're looking at using some of her staff to also do extended school year distance learning activities for kids um, with IEPs. Uh, she also had mentioned that quite possibly if the summer food programs are going to to be doing food, then some of her staff might also do that. But she, there's a core staff that's hired and employed, and then she hires summer staff. And I'm not sure that the summer staff is all hired at this point. Okay, thank you, Deb. I was interested in that information. Thanks. Um, Tara, do you have the numbers you told me by town of what it might cost, what makes up that $59,000 um, handy? I know I didn't think we were gonna no, use No, I it don't, Bruce. I just totaled it all up and recalculated it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you what we paid in payroll in April because that's the information we had to submit to the state. Okay. Um, how much was budgeted for the one planet? I mean, I mean, we have something in the budget for doing a summer program, right? Niels? Uh, I can't answer that, but Tara might be able to. Like, is the thought that this would cost more than what we would be doing if we did have a summer program? I guess that's my question. And why would it be reimbursable differently 
if we have an active summer program versus if we're just doing the well the reimbursable is not the issue as much as the labor cost is uh you know i i don't uh, i'm anticipating that but when we have the labor cost either way like we need to be preparing these meals and getting them if we had the summer meal program and the difference would just be people would be coming and picking them up instead of you know there being kids in the building that we would be feeding perhaps I, I, I don't know can i speak can you hear me yep yeah so it seems to me that you want us to make a decision on something that we don't have enough information about that's what I was just going to say. You know, so I think that it, it would behoove the SU to come back with a proposal that is in, uh, complete. And um, and then we can do, I can't vote on anything right now because I don't know if it should be a Strafford vote. Or I don't know how much money I'm voting on. I don't know if it's going to be reimbursed. I don't know if I vote as an SU, then I will be in reimbursed. If I vote as Strafford, it's not reimbursed. You need to give us more information. And so I say, come back to us. I think along those lines, this is all still speculative because the, the decision hasn't even been made yet. Um, so I know we want to be pro proactive and not be reactive, not be waiting. I know for, that, for that uh, I'm down. sorry to, have to interject. Bruce invited me for part of this conversation. And so I've been sitting back listening. I mean, my thought process tonight was not to have, actually ask you for permission for anything at this point. It was to just get a sense from the board if we were able to run summer meal programming and or summer in-person programming, is that the sentiment of the board for us to try to pursue it? And that's really what I was looking for tonight. So if you even just want to give yeah. some thumbs up or comments, think... Bruce said that this could be a decision I make. And so I'm just looking to get a sense from the board about what you're wanting me to try to pursue. Everyone here I think is committed to like making sure our kids are fed over the summer, regardless of whether we see them or not. And how about the summer program? I'd, I'd like to see it. I think it has a huge benefit, of, uh, benefits a lot of kids, a lot of families. If there's a way we can do it safely, I'd, I'd like us to try to do our best to do it. If it could be, it, it, Jamie, if it could be, Something that's more than you know a a, a glorified day or, uh, daycare. Something that supports you know um, uh, you know multi tiered support systems that supports um, social emotional learning that gets our kids into a place. You know, I, it worries me when I see the numbers about how domestic abuse is 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 quote dropping during COVID, and I think about it's how many of those kids aren't seeing the mandatory reporters at an elementary school. Or, or on a bus or other places. I think giving you know giving a, a an appropriate socially distanced program that keeps the kids you know in the idea that school is important in their life and school matters to them and their education and their growth matters to 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 the communities they're in. You know I, I think figuring out how we can support a program that does that that we can afford and that you know because I I, I just really worry about how much how much excrement's going to hit the fan in, in 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 September if we just say okay well we're just backing off and we're just going to let all these kids because they really will have had basically a summer vacation times two in terms of regression and loss of skills and in, and 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 in uh, just that social emotional school retention so a program that is meaningful provides you know multi tiered supports and 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 has a social emotional component I, I think would be awesome. Something that just you know takes the kids to the river so mom and dad can go work is is not as good. Yep. We talked about I met with Bill and uh, Terry today, and we talked about a nine to three program from Monday through Thursday if we were able to get pull this off because we felt like we had the staffing, supplies, and ability to do it safely. So you know, um, and that that would incorporate meals for six weeks. Right. So, so I just going to defend kids going to the river for the day so mom and dad can work because number one, mom and dad have to work. And number two, there's a tremendous amount of things you can learn at the river. That's true. Um, for the, for so the thank you. That was helpful. I just wanted to get a, a sense from the board. 
for the purposes of the minutes, I just wanted to make sure that I'm not misrepresenting the conversation. I just want to conclude with the board agrees that meaningful summer educational programming and summer meals should be pursued to all safe degrees and that the SU should pursue our participation in these programs. Does anybody find that that's untrue or could be worded better or more grammatically? Everybody okay with that generally? Yep, absolutely. And Jamie, for my feedback, I really hope that we have some type of a summer program. I echo what Carl said. I'm really concerned about these kids not having any all the way till September. Thank you, guys. I, it's good. I appreciate it. It tells me what I need to be focused and what I'm trying to have happen. So thanks. Okay. Bruce, what else you got? Uh, I've got some for non-public, but other than that, nothing more here. Okay. Um, I, the agenda is not up anymore. <laughs> It's business um, manager next, Kathy. Okay, Tara. I don't have anything. Okay. Next. Yep. Okay, I had um, I had wanted to talk about the Idea B grant. It's also called the LEAP grant, the Local Ed Education Agency Plan grant. Um, Tara has some assurances that every board chair of the member districts um, in the SU need to sign um, that gives us permission to pursue this grant. So it's a federal grant. It can only, there's some rules, it can only be spent on special education services and things exclusively for special education. Um, in the past, we could put personnel in it and all kinds of things. Um, the rules for all grants changed a while ago. And so if staff is put in there, then we have to pay, right now it's 19% of their salary to cover their retirement and other things. So we don't anymore put any staff in there. Um, in the past couple of years, it's generally about $500,000. The reason, <laughs> we're kind of um, not clear is it's supposed to be loaded into the grant system by May 1st each year. And we're supposed to have the amount. We don't have the amount, it's not loaded in the system, but we can apply for it um, I, as early as June 1st if it's brought before the board and they understand that they need to sign these assurances. Um, and, um, that's and Tara just sent me a message. Um, I had thought earlier today that only Don, the, the WRVSU board chair, needs to sign. Um, there was some confusion today when we had a meeting, and so they said, No, maybe it's everyone. So it was just confirmed that, uh, because for the um services plan that we do in the fall, every board chair has to sign. So um, Don will have to sign it. So the things that I generally put in, we generally do not commit all of the money in the initial phase. And we're especially not gonna do it this year because Jamie and Don will be taking over on July 1st and they might have some different ideas as to how to best utilize some of this money. We always put um, special ed transportation in there because of the cost and it offsets um, the high cost of the special ed transportation. Uh, usually we put about $350,000 in there because that is the amount of the contract we have with Butler's. It doesn't cover all of the special education costs because some parents transport their own kids, we have a few more vendors that we have to use depending on need and where kids are going. Um, we also um, put in, um, it just went right out of my head. Um, Tara, help me, I forgot. <laughs> uh, and I pulled up somebody else's, Cynthia's stuff. Um, we put in for the, uh, Oh, I know, the tuition for the kids that are not high cost. So we have East Valley Academy that we have some kids going to. And the cost of East Valley is 35,000 a year plus transportation. The high cost mark is $60,000 a year for kid for extraordinary expenditure. So we purposely don't wanna put any kid costs into the grant 
that would prevent them from hitting that high cost mark if they we know that they're going to be high cost because we get more reimbursement back for the um, high cost students. So we put the kids that go to East Valley, that tuition in there. There's just like with the, um, the CFP grant, we have to do procurement and assurances. We have to have contracts and things need to be billed monthly if we're putting things like that in. The third thing that we're going to put in is we are working, have been working with Ray to replace um, special ed uh, computers that the case managers and the related service people use because a lot of them are pretty old and to get into a system of replacement. So we have computer, I think it's about 15 computers that we wanna put in there. Those are the only things, and that comes up to about $375,000 roughly, 350 to 375. There's some rollover funds that we did not use this year. And then there's money that's left over. Um, we did have coaching in this past year that we put in midway through the year. Um, for reading instruction. Um, we don't have that in right now. Um, so there's, there's different things that could possibly put in. Are there any questions? I have a question, Deb. Sure. Um, so one of the things that we encountered um, just recently with uh, the, the shift in our district to, to, to distance learning is that we had uh, a cohort of teachers that their 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 computers sound like they're very similar to some of your teachers where they were perfectly fine for doing what needed to be done in uh in our case k-6 to um kind of classrooms but when they had to suddenly be used to for distance learning they really couldn't because they didn't have the capacity to handle the the the, the multiple connections and the the network bandwidth to have like a google meet or whatever with kids so we were told at that time that you know, the, 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 the emergency replacement gear that we had to buy those teachers so they could teach this spring was going to be CARES Act at, uh, uh, eligible. Have you guys looked at that and have you broken out which sort of, which of these costs might be, be CARES Act eligible because these case managers or these, these uh, uh, teachers are suddenly having to do a, a, a much more technically complex distance learning program than the classroom or one-to-one -one instruction they were doing before? Um, I, I'm not sure it would qualify because this, you know, um, special ed equipment needs to be um, bought separately from general ed equipment and it needs to be marked as special ed equipment. And so these are really old computers. So it's just normal wear and tear. You know, we, we didn't have someone that was really looking at replacing and getting a system together till Ray came along. So, um, and it could be, uh, and you know, the thing about the, this grant is once you get initial approval, you can start spending the money. You can also amend it. So nothing is set in stone. So if it gets in, my concern is that the approval process last year with the changes at AOE took forever. Uh, they took till like mid September and we had submitted it, um, in June. Um, so we want to get it in quickly. And, um, and then it can be amended once the general approval is there. And um, you have to write the, um, oh, what are they called? Um, the strategies in a very specific way. So we have the strategies. We know that they've already been approved. But it's something. So since it's for next year, Deb, yeah. Deb since it's for next year, are you going to? I'll run it by Jamie and Don before it finally goes, or is that something you send? It? How does that work? I talked to Don got a copy of it and I talked to him about it a couple of times. Um, and Jamie, you're there. I mean, I don't think he had an issue with it. Um, and I know he's doing one for his district. So Jamie, you can weigh in on what you think. I, I've got a meeting with Don uh, coming up tomorrow. He, he wants to chat and this could be part of it. So I'm assuming, Deb, if he said he didn't have any concerns, then he probably doesn't. No, uh, and you okay. understand, you understand so, Jamie, that you can change amend, it, yep. and amend it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so more to follow and get this around for board chairs to find? 
So this yeah, the, and, and, and you have to I'm make a motion. Saying, yes. There has to be a motion <laughs> from the SU board that you will accept the monies for the LEAP grant and you're supposed to do it for CFP as well. So you can maybe do it together after you hear about the CFP. Okay. Okay, and um, Cynthia um, fell this afternoon and I spoke to her about an hour ago. Um, and initially she was not gonna go to the hospital but she's gone to get checked out. So she's not gonna be available by phone. Um, and so she had asked someone to read her um, report on grants. So I don't know if you want to have it, you want it um, read to now or Mary Ellen, if you wanted to forward it to the board um, or Bruce, when you wanted to do that. And I can give a brief overview for everyone. Wherever she is on the agenda. I don't know where she is on the agenda. Is she next? Yes. She is. Uh, um, Kathy, uh, okay for Mary Ellen to give you the hit the highlights? Sorry, yeah, it looks like we skipped over we the technology director. Yeah, okay, so Ray's next. Oh, sorry. Okay, but wait, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Um, so we'll get, we'll get back to, is the coordinator you want to vote on the CFP and your yours at the same time, Jeff? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because you're both federal grants, so if the board makes a motion to accept the federal grants and mentions IDB and the CFP, then we're good. They need it needs to be in the minutes so that they can be okay. submitted. Okay. So before we get to Ray, let's do the, the grant coordinator since she's not going to be here, and then we'll vote on this and then go back to Ray. So Kathy, go ahead. So, permission, I'm going to present. Yeah what Cynthia has and Mary Ellen is going to. Oh, good. Thank uh, you, Ray. Good, right? So um, the first thing um, Cynthia says is she diverted some of the funds from the current year from Title IV to cover some of the internet connections and devices that we needed for about 35 students. We're thinking that might continue into the future. She's also provided some books. We diverted some of the money to buy books for pre-K. Um, because they, they needed more than what they had in their classroom. For next year, she set up the allocations and uh, what she has is because of the free and reduced lunch numbers have decreased, it has changed some of the allocations, but we're roughly getting about the same as we did last year. About 300,000 of that will cover the interventionist cost in the schools. Uh, Part of it will fund the coaching for teachers and our literacy materials as we move into phonics next year. Uh, there'll be additional monies for our social emotional support for students in the form of counseling and group supports. Uh, teachers are embarking on PBIS, which is like a behavior system, behavior management system. We, we have about, I think, 30 people going uh, this year. COVID-19 is more communication between parents and families. So she's got some allocations for parent engagement in there for projects funded by grant funds. Uh, I'm doing a real rough summary and we can share this and you can take a look at it in more um, detail. She also has the BEST grant and the Act 230 grant and that has, and the tobacco grant. And so those are other grants put together to uh, help support the BEST Institute which is the end of this year. It's an online program to do PBIS. Um, she's got about 30 teachers and administrators participated in that in multiple schools across the SU. It also provides information on the MTSS, multiple multi-tiered systems of supports and behavior interventions. And the tobacco grant, she didn't get much funding further than the SAP counselor. And the teen summit was canceled because of the um, current conditions we're in. So we're hoping that we're going to do that again next year. I think that's okay. a, just a real quick brief summary of everything that's in there. Okay. And as Thank far you. as the uh, federal grants for next year, um, Don, Mary Ellen, myself, Tara, Ray, and Cynthia have been meeting in regards to planning and budgeting for next school year in regards to how we use our title funds. So know that we've had two meetings already 
Um, and I'm feeling pretty comfortable about the direction we're heading in that. Um, of course, there's, there definitely may need to be amendments based on COVID-19 and how we respond to that. But um, right now, I'm feeling like we're, we're tapping into our resources in uh, a responsible and effective way for next school year in regards to what we're looking to propose. Any questions? Um, only please send Cynthia our best. Um, I will. Thanks. Deb, can you tell me how that motion needs to go again? Um, that the board, um, I don't know the exact wording. Uh, I move the that the, I move the, the board authorize uh, the uh, uh, 2021 CFP and LEAP grant uh, applications as uh, presented uh, to the board. That would work. So moved. <clears throat> okay. Any discussion? Seconded. All right. All those. Okay. So all those in favor. Uh, Carl. Carl says yes. Ethan. Yes. Lisa. Lisa, are you there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you call my name. Okay. Megan? Megan Tito? Yes. Michael Gray? Yes. Robert Gray? Yes. Andrew? <clears throat> I think Andrew's not here anymore. I'll see him. Okay. So look, Sarah's here and I vote yes too. And Stacey. Sue, are you still there? Stacy and, and Stacy, Sue. yes. All right, thank you. Sue? Maybe Sue's not here anymore either. She so moved. shows that she might be have a problem unmuting. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure, but the eyes have it. All right, so now technology director. Okay, I'll be brief. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully, starting next week, there'll be a way for uh, parents to register students online for all of the uh, operating districts. Um, today, we tested out a way for grades to sync from Google Classroom to uh, Web to School, what we use for grades. Um, it's not something we're ready to roll out to all the teachers yet. Uh, something we haven't talked about yet tonight is uh, getting devices back from students and families at the end of the year. For example, the, uh, the MiFi's, there are, uh, about 50 of them out at the moment, and they're funded by a grant, so the grant has limitations. So uh, that ha will have to wind down for the end of the year, and those come back. Chromebooks or iPads that are out with students and families will need to come back so that we know how many we have to be then reissued for summer programs as needed. And that's it. Perfect. Any questions? Ray, do you have any idea of adjusted uh, replacement cost based on dispersing all these devices out to families where kids are probably rolling over on them in their beds and so on and so forth? Is you know, do, do we is this going to be a significant deficit or just a couple percent? So uh, in the in the early weeks, we got a lot of uh, requests for like power adapters, Carl. So I was pretty nervous. Uh, since since then, it's wind it's wound down, and my hope is that we're going to get back the vast majority that that we need. Um, when I make a recommendation to buy a device that's in the hands of a student, certainly into the future where they're going home, we're not just buying a device. We're buying a device that has some level of uh, ruggedness to it, uh, but also insurance that covers it for the life of the device. So accidents would be covered. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. 
Um, I just have a couple of updates. One of them is last year around this time, I renegotiated a lot of the SU wide contracts that we use for our assessment and for our my learning plan, which is our professional development plan, um, as well as a couple of other ones. And so we have multi year contracts with them, but this year I'm reaching out to them again due to the change in the circumstances to see if we can get even a further reduction. And I have got a little bit further reduction on them. So I'll keep you updated on that. We're still negotiating. And uh, Ray and I have been um, kind of working on that together. So thank you, Ray. It's nice to have a partner. Also, our grade alike meetings, when we bring all the teachers together, we have our last meeting this week. So we have planned out all of the curriculum for math and reading for elementary through the end of the year now. And we're going to change them to focus meetings. So there'll be cluster meetings where we'll bring together groups of teachers, pre-K, one and two in pre-K, K, one and two in one group, and three, four, five, six in another group to really start to address some of these um, issues about planning for next year, assessments, how do we create learning uh, instructional materials that can be used both in the classroom and in remote learning. So I think that's a quick synopsis of what we've been working on. Oh, and I've also been doing the pre-K work now that our pre-K coordinator has been out for a while. So I think that's what we've been working on in that area. Yeah, our pre-K coordinator, you, uh, had a death in the family uh, about a week ago. Her son died. And uh, so we're, we're, people are picking up the slack uh, because she's not not around and even if she was around wouldn't be in much shape to be able to deal with things so well, first of all that's, that's hard. hopefully you know extend to the board's you know uh, you know condolences and sympathies um mary ellen when you're looking at going forward and you're you're talking about specifying things as we think about the model that jamie was talking about that might be a hybrid model or would have you know some distance learning components are you considering or, or, or I mean, we, 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 we made a budget for next year for you guys that didn't involve, um, you know, virtual simulations or other online platforms or world language platforms or various things is as you're thinking about how to best educate our kids next year, are there things that you're going to be thinking about coming back to us and asking you to fund further or, um, you know, is, I mean, is that something that's being considered as, as, as we have to pivot to, to an environment where suddenly we may have, you know, a classroom full of kids with another class with another group of kids watching, uh, watching through a meeting like this? Yeah, we're, we're hoping that we won't have to use additional funding, Carl, because we have a pretty good system set up that we've started where we're actually having the teachers collaborate with each other. So instead of one teacher creating all the lessons for their classroom, it's across the supervisory union. So they only, you know, they get nine, you know, nine le lessons, let's say for, you know, one teacher doing that one week. And so we can so share. So this is a your, of your grades alike program, right? Where yes. each, where the teachers can each kind of divide and conquer on tasks. That's no, and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm not asking to, to, to like to tow a budget line. I'm just saying that as you're, you're looking at that over the summer, if you can, the, the more warning in time you can give us to say, we really need this package X or we need this, you know, app suite Y, um, you know, find us X amount of money. The, 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 the sooner I think we look at those things, the sooner we can think about grant sources to alternately fund them, the sooner mm -hmm. we, we can try to think about getting our teachers the, the training they need to use these new tools or buying them. So yeah. I, I really hope that we move forward on this sooner rather than later when we really, really think about some of the worst cases about hybrid education in the fall. Yep, and, and I think the biggest area, Carl, is really training on technology. That's really the area, because I think we have a lot of the tools already. We just have to know how to use them best to best suit the situation that we're in. So that's where we are. Any other and questions? the board will get used to me saying that we traded A, B, and C, and here's what we traded in order to find efficiencies to add here. Um, so, the, Carl, that's that's what my directive will be to administrators is tell me what you've traded and how you're paying for it based on the means that you've been given. All right. Anything else for Mary Ellen? All right. So, Bruce, we have negotiations on here. 
Yeah, but I want to take that into non-public, please. Um, and then we have policies on here. Um, I think you can probably forego that for this meeting. I Hopefully, the only thing I'll say about the policies is hopefully you've seen them all by now. And uh, we'll be ready at your local budget or your local board meetings to be able to uh, vote on them. Uh, there are 16 of them. And uh, they're currently with Dina. I'm trying to get her to finish her work and get them back to me. Um, and so by hopefully by the board meetings coming up, uh, we will have had her blessing on them. I hope it's not any more than a word here or a word there, but they're in pretty good shape. I'm hoping they'll be smoothly uh, dealt with, with with all. Um, F. Bud has not seen them yet. See them tomorrow night, I believe. Okay. Fun. Maybe we won't see them tomorrow night. Maybe it'll be in June. Um, okay. Um, what else we got? Um, so you put on discussion items policy review, but we don't have any to review tonight, correct? Correct. We can do you that also, in the next meeting, I guess. Right. And you also have contract discussion items? That needs to go into non-public along with the negotiations thing. Okay. And so we have uh, nothing under action items. Um, is there any other business? If not, then uh, the board and go into executive session. I move the board move into executive session to consider a per personal ma personnel matter of involving both contracts and negotiations. And okay. I second that. I'd like to ask Jamie so, to end, please. So Jamie, Bruce, and, then, and just the board, correct? Correct. Bruce, you don't want me to stay now? Kara can be on, on this as well. Are we discussing yeah. SU contracts or can we wait until the record has been turned off before? Mm -hmm. yeah. So anybody that's a private caller needs to jump off of this and we'll go into non-public session. Kathy, before this ends, can you just mention the next meeting? Um, the next meeting will be May, um, June 22nd. Um, 2020 and there'll be a board meeting. Uh, reflect level funding from 2019, 2020 with the possibility of renegotiations after uh, contracts and budgets are settled. I second. Who seconded that? That was Carl. Carl. Thanks, Carl. All right, so all those in any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Carl. Carl says aye. Ethan? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Megan? Aye. Robert? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Sarah Root? Aye. Stacy? Uh, aye. Sue? Aye. I think I got everybody. Um, so the ayes have it. I think we're almost done, guys. Um, do I have a motion to anything else for anybody tonight? Most we have a motion to our meeting on Thursday and our next regular meeting, so we have all that appropriately noted. Yep. So who made the motion? Darren. Can I just real quickly just thank you all in public session that have reached out um, just to send your thoughts and um, in regards to the Williamstown community, that meant a lot. So thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I move right. we adjourn. Second. Uh, all right. We are so adjourned. Have a Thank good night, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Kathy.